Welcome back everyone to Self-Serving Skillet. Let me just say what an honor it is and a truly humbling experience that this channel is taking off so well now. We've nearly doubled our subscriber count since the last video aired at the time of this filming. This channel is growing so fast that I believe I've already earned my bronze play button, but YouTube hasn't even had time to confirm my address to send it to me. So thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Let's poach some eggs. Give me an egg and I'll build you an empire. Let's crack as many eggs as we want to make. And you can do this with one bowl. Dump your egg, crack your egg, dump your egg, crack your egg. I do find it's a little bit easier to do with more bowls you're gonna make more dishes but that's a sacrifice that I'm willing to make for the sake of ease and brevity while I'm actually doing it to get a really nice tight poached egg you can see that this cracked egg instead of just having a white and a yolk it actually has this sort of uh, watery uh, exterior and then we have the much uh, more dense kind of gelatinous white so I want to remove this sort of more liquid part and it's gonna make for much better poached eggs and I'm gonna do that just by holding the yolk and the white in place and seeing what comes off not that much but certainly enough not to waste it if you're doing beaten eggs on the regular. This is my setup and see right when it starts to bubble like that on the bottom I'm gonna turn it down to about a medium heat and then I have a saucepan back here on low I want this to stay somewhere around 120 130 degrees Fahrenheit roughly 55 C and that's just to keep my poachers warm while I make everything else. Now just at the point where it's shimmering like this, I'm going to add some acid. You can go white vinegar, you can go wine, I'm doing a white wine vinegar. Let's get to poaching some eggs. You also want a utensil that has uh, slots in it you can use a slotted spoon this is a fish spatula which i use most often not for fish and i'm going to make my water spin i'm creating sort of an egg vortex in the middle here that will support my egg there we go and it's Pretty much staying in the middle there, being cradled by this vortex of water. I don't have too many strings, egg strings, hanging out. And once this is set, I'm going to move it off to the side. And it's set now. You can see that it sort of detached itself from the bottom of that pan and it's sort of traveling on its own. If it doesn't do that, get your tool, just gently. Get that egg up. But for right now, we can do another one. And if you're not confident enough to do that, don't worry about them. Do them one at a time. That was just my personal thing. And then this has been, I don't know, three minutes or so. And I can take this this other egg out and I can tell that it's very set with a jiggly yolk and I'm gonna drop that in my warm water bath see poached eggs can seem very difficult but this is really my preferred method for when I need to make a lot of eggs and serve them warm because this two bath, this two temperature 
bath method will let me make each one of them perfect or as perfect as I can make it and then keep them warm until I'm ready to serve. This is what they do in restaurants on a larger scale. They're not back there individually poaching your eggs. During downtime, during prep time, they'll make a bunch of these and then assemble to order. Unless you're at a really nice place and that's why your eggs benedict takes 45 minutes. So you could do more if you wanted. I did uh, break this one egg right here. I'm not quite sure how that yolk's gonna turn out. This water isn't hot enough to cook the yolks. The yolks will cook at about 150 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 65 degrees Celsius. And the egg whites will cook about five degrees under that. So that's our trick. I guess for demonstration purposes, I should show you what it looks like when you try to do the whole egg without straining that little bit off first, and I'm out of bowls, so I'll use a plate. You see, you see how that's traveling around, it's sort of coming off. It looks a little, little Halloweeny, a little spider webby. Uh, that's that's what you want to avoid if you can, and if you're cool with it, then I'm cool with it. It's not hurting anything. It looks just fine. It's, uh, it just has a little bit more of this sort of hanger on, messy look to it, which is just fine. It's still gonna taste delicious. But sometimes we worry about presentation too. So what are we gonna make with these? The obvious answer is Eggs Benedict. And if you watched last week's episode where we make our own English muffins, you know where that's where this series is going. But if I'm dedicating a whole episode just to how to poach an egg, I've gotta make something that's not Eggs Benedict. Oven bacon on a wire rack like this is probably my favorite way to make bacon. Putting this in a cold oven and then turning it to 325, 350 Fahrenheit, around 180 Celsius, will render this fat out. You can reserve the fat and cook with bacon grease, which is wonderful. And then it really gives you a lot of control over the chewiness to crispiness of your bacon. Usually takes about half an hour. I like to set my clock for about 25 minutes just to check it, see if anything's different. And if it is, I can pull it. And it's my intention to save as much of this bacon fat as possible, so I'm gonna drag them across my, my uh, baking rack there. We drain on paper towels because right now the bacon is nice and crispy, but if we allow it to cool with that oil, it's gonna start to seep back in. So this preserves the crispiness. And as you can probably tell, I don't like my bacon overly crispy. I know that there are there's those who do. I just like it a little more meaty. And I just like to save this bacon, bacon grease in a mason jar. Use a rubber spatula to get, I mean, I don't need to get it all because I don't wanna be here all day, but an extra two minutes taken with it will yield me a lot more. I have another one here from a previous batch that I did. You can see that it uh, it solidifies at room temperature, pretty pretty white, and then the, the bacon bits kind of float to the bottom there. 
I'll probably go through this in about a week. Finish blotting it on paper towels. Just because I have it, I'm gonna use that bacon fat to roast my potatoes. Salt, pepper, and whatever seasonings you'd like. I'm gonna serve this with some sriracha sauce over top, so maybe uh, chili powder and smoked paprika for me. And we just want a sauce to incorporate. I want to be a little bit gentle with this because these potatoes have been boiling for a good 20 minutes and they are fragile, but that's what's going to make them so good when we roast them. Oven's already at 350 degrees. I'm actually going to turn it up to 450, about 230 Celsius. Pop these in. Oven's already nice and preheated. It's just going to heat up a little bit more. 20 minutes. So you don't have to do this. You don't have to spend all this time making this dish. You can make your bacon ahead of time and your potatoes while you're making your poached eggs. I did this to demonstrate the very effective technique of that warm water bath because this is we're going on almost three hours now and check out that yolk. Still warm, still a runny yolk, hours later. If you're feeling educated and or entertained by this video, let YouTube know by giving me a thumbs up. It just lets my videos get in front of the right people. A little bit of heat from this raja really goes well with that nice, rich egg yolk, crunchy potatoes, nice meaty bacon chili powder and smoked paprika was a great all-around choice. Chive gives it a nice herbaceousness. I like this a lot. Join me next time where we're going to complete this Eggs Benedict theory and make some hollandaise sauce. If you're interested in other ways to prepare an egg, I suggest you check out this playlist right up here. If you're thinking to yourself what kind of breakfast cocktail would go with this, I'll put that right over here.